Hello, welcome to the first part of the fence tool. So we're going to create a fence based on a curve you draw. In Houdini, the first thing that we will need is of course a curve. So I will just make a geometry network here. So we can make geometry and I will type in curve. So in Houdini 19, the curve node has been reworked. So keep that in mind if you would be familiar with the previous versions. And we're going to here click on our handle. I'm also going to enable the grid. And I'm also going to go back here and enable grid snapping. So those are a few options that I want to enable. So now I can draw a curve. And as you can see, like by default now, it's actually uh, a busy curve. So we can like have quite smooth lines. But in this case, since I want a fence from a very basic curve, I want to switch that uh, to actually a non busy curve. So I'm going to actually do a reset of everything. And I want to change this either way here, so we can change this, or we can also change this here at the top as well to a polygon. So now we are just uh, doing a polygon drawing mode, which is not doing a Bezier with curves. So we're gonna just draw like a very basic curve for to, to start with. I'm also gonna zoom out uh, until I, like, I have a, a proper amount of units. Um, so in here I have like from 15 to zero. So let's for example, draw something uh, like so and then when you're done we can press enter so this is my starting shape something just like very basic like this you can make it further uh, but for now this is my starting shape what can be a good thing to do here on this curve is to actually also do some sort of like cleanup step um, it's actually more needed when you input something from Unreal so when you input a curve from Unreal to Houdini you might actually need to do a cleanup so what I will often do is just place the clean note and the clean note uh, we're going to disable these two toggles and we're going to just say to remove all the attributes and groups. So if there would be any chance that we already have a certain scaling value of here, we're just going to delete that so it doesn't conflict with my system. Then what is also useful to do is using the face node and this is to clean up the lines. Uh, so we're going to here enable remove inline points. So in case the curve have multiple points, we will delete those points. And so that's like a small cleanup stage. Next up, I want to think about adding corners and also like a just like straight parts. So this tool, I'm going to specifically say that the corner pieces are uniquely generated. So that means that I, that I can cover every single corner the artist or the user would, would create. So for the then just like if we have like a straight part, a straight line like this, we can just instance models. So then, then we don't have to uniquely create that. We can just, for example, then instance things. So I will first of all do a bevel. So we're just gonna place the bevel node. The bevel node, we have to say that we need to bevel points because we don't actually have like real geometry. So we're gonna have to say bevel points. And I'm gonna set the distance for now to 1.5. So you can see that we have some of these beveling going on here. I'm also gonna have the dimensions all the way up to 20 here. And the last thing to do in the bevel is to actually enable a group. So we want to actually uh, output the offset points. Then I would like to capture those edges here that are now being beveled. And the way I'm going to do that is by uh, converting the line here. So convert line. This will uh, make make all individual primitives. So before it was like one primitive, but now they are all individual ones. So I can just select, for example, only this part then. Then we want to do a group uh, promotion. So group promote. And with this group promotion, we want to then promote the offset points to actually the primitives. Uh, so what you see here is that we will now uh, select everything except those uh, corner pieces. Uh, what we can also do is we can do an invert of that. So invert uh, of group. So we can just now grab those primitives here and invert that. So with that new inverted group, we can then, for example, do a split. So split option. And then we can just say to uh, use that offset points and we're now splitting that. So one thing that you might notice with that is if we actually take a closer look uh, to the group here, is that we still have this like one single polygon here that should actually be part of this beveling part. So the, what I will do here is after I inverted the group is I will do a group expand. So with this note, we can expand the selection of a group. So we want to say that our base group is that offsetting group. 
and as you can see now I can start to expand that so I can add more I can add less so we can play around with that so we just adding one is good enough so now instead of using the offset points we actually need to use our new group uh, which is then called uh, the group expand so of course you can give this a better naming if you want to uh, but that's sort of what I want so now I have extracted those bevel parts now let's first tackle here the straight part. So I'm going to invert selections and I'm just going to have those just like lines uh, that represent those uh, shapes. And with that, I want to build a system that sort of knows how many models that can fit in a single line. So here I brought an example model that we used in Titan. And I want to now have a system then that calculates how many times can I put that model into this line. So we're going to do a few steps here with that. I'm going to first do another conversion of line. Uh, this might just be useful again if you have like points on the line. So we're just splitting that. Uh, that we want to do is split uh, points. So we are just breaking up all the shapes in separate pieces in case they would be connected. And very important now is to do a resampling. And this is controlling the size. So here I will use the set size. And this needs to be the size of your model that you're going to use. So in my case, it probably will be two units. So I can always go back to change this. So we're now creating or distributing these points evenly on these lines. So those will then represent the spacing for my modular model. Then we want to do a other uh, conversion of that. So convert lines. So again, we want to break up the lines into individual primitives. So right now we have three primitives where we want to break that up into multiple primitives. So each primitive is basically now holding the space for that uh, model that I have. Then we want to do a split of points again, or we can also use the split of uh, primitives. So we can just again split those primitives. If we use primitives, we also have to disable uh, by attributes since I don't want to use an attribute. Then what we can do is we want to just have like one single point now for each primitive. So we're going to use a primitive node. And in there, we're going to say that we want to do a transformation. So in here, we can enable do transform. And we can say that the scaling is, for example, zero. So if I scale this down, you can see that my primitives are individually shrinking. So be sure you are splitting it is. Otherwise, this, this won't work. So we're going to have to just say this zero, zero, zero. So now we have individual points that, again, will be used to then copy my model on. We also need to do a fuse after that. So we are creating multiple points, but we also want to do a cleanup of that. And by default, we also have to disable this toggle here because otherwise it will remove those repeated vertices. Then next up, I want to figure out uh, how to rotate them. So if I would now do the classic copy to points, uh, so here copy to points, you will see that we will don't know how uh, the model needs to copy. So you can see that this is not really going uh, in the right direction so you're just all facing the same direction so we want to figure out the system to like handle the rotations so i want to go back where i made my uh, curve over here uh, and i want to do a resample on that so resample and in here in the resample we want to enable here the first setting and we want to then maybe lower the resolution so we have like not that many points now what can be quite interesting to do is to actually do a uh, orient along curve node so orient uh, along curve which is a cool note to automatically calculate rotations for a curve so we have that over here because I, I want to change a couple settings to make it a bit better first i want to say that the up vector uh, needs to always be the y-axis so it will always check for the y-axis instead of the curve normal then i want to disable uh, this setting here i want to open then also the rotations and let's enable here those uh, roll jaw and pitch values so these values can be used to tweak the rotations of models and at this case i probably want to set a jaw value of 90. so let's see how well that would work uh, so now how can we transfer the data from one to another is with a transferring node so transfer attributes so we have the transferring and what we specifically want to transfer of data is that we want to transfer the normal and the up vector. So in Houdini, there are two ways of controlling the rotation. So either you use normal up vector, or you can also use something which is called an orient attribute, which is a vector four. So here uh, we have that now being transferred and let's see if that would make the difference. 
and you can already see now that my uh, rotations are now better so th this is more like i would expect it and for my system what i actually want to do and what will be useful for in the future is i don't want to use the normal value that is being generated over here i want to then actually make something a bit more custom so this is like one way on on how you could for example do this which is a quite useful way and you can for example now easily start to rotate and play around with rotations but what can also be useful is for example doing extrusion so we can say poly extrude in here we're not going to use the basic extrusions we're going to enable this uh, custom extrusion and we're going to say global and we're going to just move this up so move this up so we're going to create like this basic shape like a wall and from this shape what we want to do is we want to calculate the normal value so we're going to say here i want to calculate the point normal so we're going to calculate points as you could see here and uh, to sort of like showing you what what we want to do with like the rotations of the model so again we can actually just grab this node here and we can just say to transfer to normals uh, so transfer normal uh, like so so in this case you can see it makes a difference in what way they're facing uh, but in later stages when we build the corners it will actually make more sense and, and it will definitely help out to, to have like a clean corner uh, setup then one last thing we want to do here is we want to then talk a bit about the scaling so as we here set our sizes so we have these parts uh, when we do another convert lines we actually compute the length of each line so if i open my attributes check my primitives uh, we can see that we are not consistently hitting that size of two so here i set size of two so we want to use that information to now scale uh, those models so what i want to do is i want to now here do a promotion of an attribute so attribute promote and in here we want to promote the primitive value the length here to the points because we are just doing this process of only like having points so i just want to make sure that our data is stored on the points so we are converting that it can also be great to actually change the name to something like width or length um, so just like know a bit better what this value would be with that we want to now bring in a wrangle and in here we are now uh, setting scale so we can rename this to set scale we can say at our scale value or the assign a scaling value and this is equal to setting the values of x y and z so we have like control over over the axis so the first one will be actually calling our width so we're going to say at the width value and we can for example divide this by two and then we can define a height value which will be one and then also one for uh, the z axis so now we have that in place so let's take a look here and you can see that we are now here we are properly scaling those models nicely next to each other so if i go back to my curve so if i go here to an editing mode so now if i would start to grab this you can see that we are nicely scaling the models on the line so that works like expected so that was it for this video so we created the curve and we also did like a first pass of actually adding our models to that curve next video i'm going to then talk about adding this corner part so this will be uniquely generated to fit perfectly what we have or what we want to build so hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching